a lot of granularity on how I want to do this. And guess what? If you're going, well, what about this one, the odd page? Same thing. It inserts a section break and would start it on the next odd numbered page. So this is some very odd, strange behavior that you might see. Now, if I go ahead and get rid of uh, the page break here, you might say, well, how do I know this? Again, click on your show hide and see section break and it tells you it's going to move it to the next even page which would be page six. And if I scroll up here, section break continuous. So it describes to you which section break you have, page break, and then over here is a section break to the next page. So those are the different types of uh, section breaks that you have. Very important because, again, you need to understand that this is how you can separate your document either into pages, sections, and of course we've already seen paragraph, and then apply that formatting. So now that we've done that, what else do we need to look at? Well, I promised to show you a little bit about what it means to add the margins or change your margins. Margins, of course, deal with the space that you have between your text and the side of the page or the side of the paper. Now to do this we go up to page layout and you notice that you have a really neat little button here called margins. Now in the old days when you just clicked on this and did your margins you would get what we would say is just uh, what we see on the custom margins page. So I'll go ahead and click it and you'll say, ah, I remember this. This is on the page setup dialog box and here is where you would set the pages. So let me hit and cancel. You can also, if you click the, here on the page setup, it shows the same thing, the page setup dialog box. But with Word 2007, they get a little, uh, you know, uh, you know, they like to be helpful and so they say, well, We've got some other settings that you can use that we've always said. We've got the normal, which is what Word 2007 comes with. Top one inch, the left is one inch, everything's one inch. The last custom setting was one inch and then 1.25, which, by the way, is the Office 2003 default. So you remember, your left margins had one and a quarter on both sides. Well, for some odd reason, with Word 2007, either because everyone got tired of changing it to one by one and making it even, uh, they went ahead and made that the normal. Now you can do narrow, you can do moderate, you can do wide, you can even do mirrored margins. Now what mirrored margins allow you to do is set it up almost like when it's going to be a book. So your inside margins are going to be 1.25. So if you've got, um, when you're looking at a, uh, maybe you have a, uh, you know, your three inch binders, you know, with all your filling, and you want to put the mirrored margins so it looks uniform. The text is over here and it's to the outside. So that's what mirrored does. If you've ever wondered what mirrored margins are. Now, of course, we can also come down here and say custom margins, which we can do. I can come up here and here's where I can set up my custom margins. I can set what my top is. I can set what my bottom, my left, and my right. Now gutter, by the way, your gutter position is used for your hole punches. That's why you have a gutter. That's usually, or where you crimp um, and you use that, um, and I always forget what the name is, the, the kind of the, all the multiple ringlets, and you, you know, anyway, uh, it's another way, it's not three ring holes, it's the whole thing, uh, you, that's where your gutter would be, and you say how much space do you need for it, in this case it's zero inches, you can also say whether you want it on the left, or do you want it on the top, depending on how you have your document set up, but let's go ahead and change the margins here, I'm going to say 0.7 for the top, now watch down here in the preview, when I say 0.7, it changes it. If I say 0.7, again, it changes it there. 0.7 and 0.7. Now, these are the exact same margins. And so when I apply these margins to the page, you're going to know something. Notice it says apply to this section. Why is that? Because now that I've inserted sections, it knows that I want to be nice and play nice with the sections. Now, of course, I can go the whole document. It doesn't matter what section you're in. Here are the new margins. You can do this point forward or the whole document or this section. We'll go ahead and just say whole document just to show you what it looks like. So we go ahead and do that. And by the way, pages, multiple pages, this is where you would set up the mirror margins. Do you want two pages per sheet or book fold? That's where you want margins set up so where if you take the page in landscape mo uh, mode and then fold it, you'll have a nice margin within that. So it, it looks good if you're going to fold it up. Okay, so that's what all that, you know, those pages are. We'll just do normal. We go ahead and we click OK. And bada bing, bada boom, look at this. It's now taken and now I've got 0 0.7, 0 0.7. 
I come down here. Notice, though, it does not override the hard page breaks, the manual page breaks that I put in. So if I come back here and I show the markings, it says, sorry, dude, you did a section uh, page break that brings it all the way down to here. So you're not going to see that. Oh, okay. But uh, you notice that, again, section break, boop, it did it, moved my section down here. And so I don't have enough text here. And there's the page break, does the same thing, brings it down here. So we can see that by uh, adding more space, this allows me to control. Maybe you're just like, boy, I really want to get my text onto this one page. And if I could just bump it up maybe half an inch on either side, I'm going to be able to fit the text on the title page or, or, or what you want. So that's what margins allow us to do. So we can go ahead and remember, if you want to change those margins, you can just select over here select it there you can use the page setup and it's going to allow you to do that now another thing you might want to do is what type of paper are you printing on well guess what that is going to be right here under the paper size so if you click on the paper size maybe you're using um, envelopes maybe you're using executive sheet paper which is you know slightly different legal size eight and a half by fourteen a5 b5 a4 uh, you know, whatever it is that you're using, depending on which country you're in, or and then of course more paper sizes, you can choose from the paper size, which is under paper setup, and you can choose a whole bunch that are all right here, custom size, if you have those, the width, the height, and it's going to tell you what paper source you are going to choose from, which is going to, by the way, all depend on what your default printer settings are. In this case, you have a default tray or auto. You can set these up in your uh, printer settings. What I really like is your paper source. Look at this. Your first page usually might be a cover page, and maybe you want to put it on company letterhead. Well, guess what? That you're going to put in your tray, but then the other pages, all the rest is going to be on just plain stock paper. That can come from a different tray. So you can set that up. And again, apply to this section. You could do that. And then, of course, the print options, when we click on that, allows you to go right here into your personalized options on how you want this to appear. We'll show you this in our nugget when we show you how to personalize your copy. So I'll go ahead and cancel that. And we'll go ahead and cancel out of there. So that's how you make changes for those things. We already showed you how to change the orientation. And, of course, that just simply allows you to change it from portrait to landscape. And so now we've got the basics down on how to set up formatting for our pages. Well, we took a look at how we start off on page formatting. And trust me, in our next nugget, we're going to take a look at some of the colors and how we can change certain looks and feels on the page itself. But here we needed to get that understanding that we might need to break our pages up, not the way Word 2007 wants it to do it, but the way we want to do it, with those manual page breaks, where we decide how much text remains on a page or doesn't. We might also have huge documents, which means we're going to want to break them up into sections so that way we can apply formatting not just on a page by page or paragraph by paragraph area we can also take large sections of our documents and then apply formatting to them and then margins and orientation margins of course is hey how far away from the sides and the top and the bottom do you want your text and content to be placed on the page and then orientation do you want your page to look like a standard eight and a half by eleven portrait where it's just straight up or do you turn it on its side and use it for landscape that's really good especially if you're gonna put like large tables or diagrams that wouldn't fit or you don't want to have to shrink down to fit those portrait margins I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing Microsoft Word 2007 page formatting part 2 well we got through the margins and the section breaks and we're done with that it's time to move on to the advanced features where we're gonna get a little bit of color into our lives a little bit of texture to our formatting and plus we're gonna find out that you know besides soccer and football having headers and footers well we're gonna be able to do that in our documents too we got a lot of ground to cover in this video. You'll notice we're going to take a look at how we can change the very background of our page from colors to patterns to textures. We'll also see how we can add a border around our page. We kind of mentioned that in a previous nugget about how we can do borders and shading on pages as well as paragraphs and text. Watermarks, if you ever need those to kind of in the background to say something's confidential or don't copy it. We'll show you headers and footers. That's the little bit of information that appears on each page at the top and the bottom. And then, of course, 
Wars themes? How can we wrap up all the colors and the fonts and the page effects that we have into something that is just automatically set up and ready to go? Well, themes will enable us to do that. Word 2007 is a very powerful word processor. And we like word processors is because we get that GUI, graphic user interface, with the WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So now, when you make changes to your document, instead of the old days that our parents and grandparents, when they first started doing a lot of this, where you know they weren't able to change the background or do these things on a page, you can do that. And one of the neat ways that you can add some consistency and add some flavor to your documents is to change the page backgrounds, the colors, add things like watermarks, and all of this is going to be done right here um, on your page layout tab of the Office ribbon. So the first one that we're going to probably want to take a look at is the page color. Now this is the one that typically a lot of people use. So when you click on it, it's going to say, all right, you've got your theme colors, and we'll talk about themes in just a minute, but uh, you got your themes colors, and notice when I roll over, I get that instant preview of what it looks like, uh, you know, any one of those colors that I have right here, right? So I can go ahead and choose a color if I want. Now, like olive green, that's a really nice uh, color. Um, you know, it's got a nice accent to it, looks good on the screen. Or, get this, you don't even have to do color. Look down here under Fill Effects. When you click on Fill Effects, it gives you the ability to do things like gradients. You can choose one color. And so you can go, all right, well, the first color or the color I'm going to use is going to be that olive green. Or you can do two colors. If you click on two colors, you'll say, all right, your first color is going to be perhaps uh, this uh, olive green. And then your second color is going to be your kind of this uh, rose kind of color. And so you, this is what it's going to look like. Now, what two colors allow you to do is do this kind of gradient color, where it slowly goes from one color to another. If you do one color, what it does is it starts off light, and then it goes to dark, and you can change that. You can change the shading styles. You can have it go from uh, a vertical diagonal up and down, like, you know, either way, from the corners, from the centers. I mean, these are different little ways that you can do these gradients. So that's one thing that you can do. You can also do textures. These are kind of neat. Maybe, you know, because I'm doing the history of instruments, I might, might, might want it on something like, uh, you know, papyrus, you know, paper. You know, the old Egyptian way of writing on, on those, the reeds. Or you can do maybe a, a canvas, or maybe brown paper, paper bag. Or you can even do it on a fossil, fish fossil. I mean, you got a whole bunch of different ones that you can use. But, uh, you know, let's say I want to use papyrus. Now, you can use other textures. Now, all other textures does is allow you to pick pictures that you can choose from, and that becomes the texture. Like, if I want to pick that picture and I insert it, it would show up like this. And so, you know, if you, you use this image, that's what it's going to appear behind this particular one. So you can add these images and other texts. So, you know, you got your wood, you've got your sawdust, you can choose one, and you'll notice it'll change to whatever texture you want behind it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and undo that one. But let's say, um, we'll go back here to page color, the fill effects, we also have not only the textures, but you also have patterns. Patterns are going to be, you know, things like your, you know, like lines. You can do uh, little dots if you want, small confetti, large confetti. You know, there's a lot of different. You can also choose the different backgrounds and foregrounds. So you have one pattern in the foreground and one in the back. So you can add maybe a color behind these things. So there's a lot of things. And, of course, you can just add a picture that if you want. So if I wanted to select a picture, I've got my instruments here for my uh, Acme instruments. And let's say I wanted to insert the violins, and I insert the violins in the background. It'll say, all right, that's going to be the picture. I click OK. And now notice how the text fills over this particular uh, picture. And that's, and that's how it shows up. So it's kind of neat. And, um, you know, so you can do a whole bunch of different things as your backgrounds. That's what the page color allows you to do. Let me go ahead and do that. And let's pick something that's uh, fairly simple and straightforward. We're going to just do a page color. I like, kind of like this little uh, olive green accent. So we go ahead and choose the olive green accent, and we apply it. And now on all of our pages, the background is going to be this olive green. So it kind of makes the text stand out, and it's on all the pages. The other thing we can do is page borders. Now, page borders, you'll remember, when I...